Okay guys, what's up? Welcome back. So I do have all four of the tires done now. All the screws are in the tires. Kind of hard to see. There you go. That's a little better. So I have about, there's about 5,000 screws in all the tires. So this took about four hours per tire. So I never want to do this again in my entire life. All I did was basically prop this thing up on a bucket. This big this big bucket right here basically just plopped it down on that bucket and just sat in the chair and put on some YouTube and whatever popped up watched a whole bunch of Hoonigan build biologies uh, and got all these screws in here so yeah pretty miserable to do this whole thing I'm not gonna lie but I went through the whole inside of the tire and I used some Rust-Oleum leak seal it's like a rubberized coating like a flex seal Went around the whole inside of the tire. This is the brand I ended up using. It's about $16 per container, cheaper than the Flex Seal. So, did that. Seems like it turned out okay. I did have a little bit of an issue in a couple spots because the garage isn't that warm. So, it kind of like pulled up and puddled up. So, I noticed that after it's sitting for about five hours, then I had to rotate it and roll it around. So, you can see there's like one big goober in there. And then there's a couple other spots, like I just found right here, where it's kind of settled and sitting. But it's still it's still rubbery, it's not completely sealed up yet, so that kind of sucks. So I'm probably going to put an awkward little spot in a couple of the tires. So I don't know if I get them mount mounted, if I do want to balance it. I don't know, I might try to seal a little bit more on the inside. I did just stuff a heater in front of this thing, so what happened yesterday, I ended up leaving for... A few hours but this stuff stinks so bad that wanted to air out the garage so I aired out the garage for a while and it brought the garage temp down quite a bit probably like in the 30s and then that's when I left it sitting so the garage I don't think was very warm that's why it's taken a really long time so I'm not gonna be able to go to the event today that I was gonna go to so that's what I'm gonna do now I'm gonna drive there check it out probably not stay very long maybe get a couple videos of people driving and then I'm gonna come back home I still have to find someone to mount the tires, so I've been kind of talking to Hunter, and hopefully I can go with him when he remounts his, because he had an issue with his one of his leaking, so he wanted to reseal that one and remount it. So hopefully I can go there, because a lot of people don't want to mount these. I already got turned down from a couple of tire shops that they said they're not going to mount them, so uh, let's go for a ride. All right, guys, we're getting near, close to the lake. This is actually the lake out there, so you can see all of the people I guess I just wanted to show you guys this for some of you guys that don't really see snow very often. This is all parking and people all out on ice. Big old frozen lake. So let's get out there and we'll do some digging. Here you can see we got this big old road, road plowed. So this lake is Lake Winnebago. If you look at a map of Wisconsin you'll see a big old hole in it. This is the big old hole. You got all these people, a lot of people are out here fishing. It's like sturgeon spearing season, so they sit in a shack and cut a big hole in the ice, like a big four foot hole, and watch for the sturgeon to swim under, and then they stick a spear in them and yank them out of the water. So I'm gonna try to get off this trail and then I'll go over to the left here and we'll see this, this track. Just got a little series of series of paths, so I'm gonna swing back over here. Not exactly sure how much ice is out, how thick it is. It'd be kind of dangerous for people out with like uh, snowmobiles and stuff too, because sometimes under these big drifts you get cracks and it'll push push little mounds of ice up so people can hit that when they're flying around and get hurt pretty bad. But I don't think we gotta really worry about much of that right now yet. Here, just to make you guys feel a little better, I'll show you this big old crack.
big old slider auto there. So I kind of wanted to come today just to scope this thing out because this will still be here tomorrow, I'm guessing. So if I can get the tires figured out or even might just come dink around. This is like 15 minutes from my house, so. Might be fun to come peel around when nobody's really over here. Oh, he just took out all those cones. Try to give you guys some perspective here. This is a whole line of cars just leaving the ice all on that road. If I continue to pan over, these are all people out still fishing. I'm gonna go out, I'm gonna go for go for a little ride. We'll go out on the lake and see if we can find anything else interesting or maybe a spot to kind of swirl around in for a little bit. Alright guys, so we're just gonna go peel around a little bit. I'll get go for a drive on this road. Just set up where the ice cracked. You can see all the ice kind of pushed up. And you can see that. You can see all the ice, big old ice blocks pushed up, big crack in the ice. So during the during the uh, springtime, when this ice actually starts to melt, you get big gusts of wind over the ice, and it starts to it starts to pile up and get big ice pushes throughout the like during that time and it's so big it'll actually destroy some of the houses on the side of the lake it's kind of interesting I'll try to find some pictures of some Winnebago ice pushes and put them up here we've had some people that we know had their houses like basically destroyed and crushed by the ice Passing by here. We'll get up behind it. How good you guys will be able to see it, but see the big hole in the bottom of it? That's about the size of the hole they'll cut in the ice. So it's probably like a four foot by six foot hole. Then they just tip it back on these wheels and trailer it home. So they get it where they want it, unhook it. Tip it, tip it down. The part that you're looking at now will be the bottom on the ice, and then take a chainsaw, cut a hole in the ice, drink beer, stab fish.
kind of what I was talking about here with these little ice drifts. Come flying through there with a snowmobile and hit that, and that wouldn't be good. And here we go. Uh, we're going to get off the ice, not hit this guy that's running by. And here we go. Just come out right on the road. So I know it's not a normal road, so they got a cop sitting there on the corner, and then there's a guy in the middle of the road directing traffic. So kind of kind of interesting there's a little taste of the lake life so hopefully we'll actually get out to go drive i'm working on uh getting the neutral safety switch and stuff hooked up for the truck and i might goober the inside of these tires again and get them mounted and i'd like to at least get to merrill once if not hunter and i are just going to come out to the lake on a good day and go for it hey guys so back from the lake and decided to take a little bit of time to rearrange the vehicles so this thing I'm pretty much done with, I think. So what I'm gonna be doing with this is, I still have to do, like wanna right, wire the radiator fans, switch the wheels out, I'm gonna put the Explorer wheels on here and then put the Chrysler 300 wheels on the Explorer. So I really don't have a whole lot to do with this thing. So other than that, besides what I did to it now, I just wanna drive this thing, like for the rest of the winter and just enjoy it. So I might even try to swap the Explorer in here and daily drive this thing to work and maybe put an exhaust on it. So I did get one of those like vacuum actuated valves, uh, but I messed up when I bought it and I bought a vacuum actuated instead of a boost actuated. So I might have to get creative with that thing. But what I want to do is have like a, a regular exhaust that's kind of quiet and then one that opens up when I'm in boost so or less vacuum. So might do that but that's really the only thing left as long as I don't break it I don't have any big work left to do on the truck so now the plan is to start working on the 350z here so I do have if you guys aren't familiar I do have a 5.3 in here right now and I do have uh, twin VS Racing 3582s that I'm gonna put in this thing so got enough room up front to work on everything so I'm probably gonna start pulling this stuff apart when I have the time and get the exhaust off and start trying to figure out where I want to do the turbo kit and everything in here. So this I'm kind of wanting to start early because I want to drive it during the summer and have it ready kind of by spring time and when the track season starts. Unlike what I did with this thing and kind of waited too long and now there's like two or three weeks left of ice racing and I almost missed the whole season. So plan is I want to start working on this, get this thing out and still kind of rip it around a little bit and take it out on the ice, probably go out with Hunter a couple times and just rip on the lake. But uh, I, I do want to try to get to Merrill, like I said, but I got some things to work on and change there. So yeah, what do you guys think? Start working on this. You ready? Let's do it. <laughs> 